Welcome, 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 Canada Startup with Bill Wilson. How are you doing today, Bill? I'm doing great, Dave. And Good Dave Rogers. Have some fun again. All right. And today we're actually going to have a, a special guest as we talk about Starbucks, the first 50 years. Can you remember the first time or your experience with Starbucks many years ago and maybe what it meant to you? Well, I think the very first time was probably getting one it was i guess it was the whole experience was getting one of those crazy to me at the time was a, a crazy coffee i think the one that i really liked was the um macchiato i think it was called and yes. you know you get the caramel in it and it was all whipped up and and uh all that and that was that was something big for me at the time because most of the most of the time i would just go somewhere and get like a hot chocolate or a cup of tea so going to that was it was extraordinary well, Canada Startup, we're here to bring the best top wisdom from around the world. And today we bring in the wisdom of Starbucks. And something that Bill and I have been looking at is whether it's idea or brand, innovation, creativity, sustainability. And to be very honest with you, folks, one of the best companies in the world is Starbucks. And whether you like their coffee or not, that's not what we're talking about today. We're actually talking about the way that they continue to innovate. And Bill, you've done some work recently on ideology or ideation into brand brandology so we are going to be inviting the ceo and president kevin johnson into giving some of his views and the first question i guess was really as we ask him what covid has been about uh, and what has been a challenge for starbucks of course yet they've been one of the best at pivoting and they've truly had an amazing year in fact they're open fully now in china and their market share continues to go up in China. They're growing. Yet it is really one of the greatest examples of a social enterprise. Yes. Uh, I visited uh, Seattle a couple, like before the, the uh, lockdown, and I spent time in their head, like their first coffee shop, uh, researching. And it's been amazing watching Howard Schultz and seeing what a social enterprise is truly about. So, in, in the first question that we're going to really invite, the CEO to give us his input, and then I'm going to be asking your input on his input. So let's see how that goes. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Starbucks CEO and President Kevin Johnson. Let's just see if we can get him in here, and uh, let's give it a crack. Starbucks, you know, founded in 1971, and so here we are, 50 years uh, later, and you think about this last year. You know, this last year has been one where we've uh, worked from home, we've schooled our children from home, we've uh, we've gone through sort of a period of isolation. Uh, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy even called it a social recession. And so as we get vaccinations rolled out, we are on the cusp of what we call the great human reconnection. And so here celebrating Starbucks 50th anniversary, Starbucks was built for this moment the opportunity to bring customers back into our stores, make them feel part of a community. And uh, once again, you know, people will be saying, let's go have a cup of coffee together. So uh, this is a very special moment for Starbucks. The great human reconnection, Bill. When you hear that, what comes to mind for you as, as we've been in lockdown here? In fact, we're in one of the, the greatest districts in, in Canada. Uh, we haven't had much connection with people. They're great human reconnection. They're grand human reconnection. What comes to mind for you? Uh, yeah, just getting out together and not having to think about it. You know, like it. Uh, it's amazing how much we would do stuff in the past. You know, I, I'd call you up, we'd go for a beer, or I call up a buddy. You know, you you grab a cup, of, uh, go to Tim Hortons, or you go to Starbucks. You grab, you just, you never thought about any of that stuff. Now we actually have to think it through. So I agree with him. It's going to be a, once things um, get better and we're able to get out and move freely, um, people are going to, it's going to be grand. It's going to be great, great as in huge, but great as in we can, you know, enjoy it again. And that, that whole idea of, um, uh, I guess, human connection, just being able to connect with somebody and be within a, a handshake away from them type of thing, right? Um, it's going to be huge. And, and, this, and I think a lot of the industries that are are social, like, for example, like the Starbucks and, and, and that sort of thing, um, they're ready for it. Well, they either 
they they're either ready for it like Starbucks or they better get their acting gear and be ready. <laughs> well, this is what's really beautiful about learning from some of the top leaders is that they have their plans. They have their five year plans their 10 year plans. Of course, they have to pivot like Starbucks has, like Disney has. Yet by reading their financials or meeting with the chairmen's or hearing their vision, we as small business entrepreneurs can adapt, but also pivot also. So if we can start, in fact, I know you're working on a couple of different projects with your technology, with your doodly, and perhaps there's going to be a, a branding around that, that grand human reconnection that can be adapted for perhaps some of the projects that you're working on. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to bring uh, Kevin Johnson into our discussion today to be able to uh, uh, learn from the top people. Because again, if you remember back 40 years ago when we first started going to Starbucks, it was the different place in your life that you could go and have a coffee, where you could listen to music, where you could relax. So it became the alternative to your living room, to your right. TV room. And it became the place that people would meet and connect and have wonderful experiences. So today, what we're being invited to do is really explore what can we do to be part of or even lead the grand human reconnection. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, the, the next sort of question I, I, I really was curious about because one of the things that Howard Schultz and of course the new CEO has been really adapting is sustainability. Okay. And when you think of sustainability, I'm, I'm really going to be curious on what your feedback will be after we again call in uh, Kevin Johnson to give us some insights into what the leading company, one of the leading companies in the world is doing from a point of sustainability. So let's just check in here. Had a purpose that goes far beyond the pursuit of profit. And as we think about celebrating this 50th uh, anniversary, you know, part of what uh, our role and responsibility is, is to have the wisdom to know what to honor and preserve from the past, while at the same time having the courage to boldly reimagine the future. And so when we look to the future, we've set some very bold aspirations around our environmental sustainability agenda that we call Planet Positive. It means that we want to give more than we take from the planet. So we've benchmarked our carbon, water, and waste, and we've set goals, uh, 2030 goals in each of those categories. So this investment in this coffee innovation park is the first sustainable roasting plant that we've built, the most sustainable in the world that we are building in China. And it's just one thing that we're doing to help uh, not only reduce our carbon footprint, ultimately get to net zero, but then ultimately get to where we actually store more carbon than we emit. And that is a long-term agenda and we're committed to that. So Bill, what, what what's your takeaway from Starbucks strategy for sustainability. Yeah, it, it sounds really interesting. Like it sounds like um, um, obviously he's be, he wants to reduce his carbon footprint. Like he's going to reuse a lot of this stuff, so um, definitely less waste. Um, I I like the idea, and I I guess I'm kind of thinking the beer store here. You know, nothing goes to waste. You know, you you bring your bottle back, you bring the box back, you bring the um, the caps back, everything eventually gets recycled in that sort of thing. Right. So I, I kind of see a bit of the beer store happening there. Um, but I think I like the, the fact too, that, um, you know, taking all the stuff that you have and keep using it and, and sort of bringing it forward. So instead of, um, having huge amounts of waste, figuring out how to, you know, use that, reduce it, but maybe make some money on it. And so again, for some of our listeners and watchers today, it, it really is about seeing perhaps a problem and seeing the opportunity behind it. Uh, there's always talk in Canada here about the landfills and the landfills tend to be a problem. Uh, Amazon is a major contributor to the landfills these days. Uh, yet that is somebody's issue or problem. Yet if you can come up with a process or a structure or a system that can assist with some of these problems that is the essence of entrepreneurship that is the, the way that you can take one of your ideas you can come up with a prototype 
and you can experiment with projects, projects that allow you to be perhaps into the green industry. One of the, the videos that's in uh, Continual Shift at YouTube is an interview with the greenest man on the planet, uh, Matthias Gelber. And I, I worked with Matthias over the years and in finding ways that kids can be taught about sustainability at the youngest age. Uh, he has programs, he implements it into the schools so that kids go and they teach their parents about sustainability, about different ways that uh, things can be recycled. And there's this opportunity right now if you are interested in that, and that's something that likes your spirit, to go and be curious about it, to go and explore it. Uh, is that something that you got much involved with here in Canada, Bill? Or is that something that um, is still perhaps a, a little bit on the, the uh, fringes for yourself? Uh, well, again, the closest thing that this sort of hit me with all this is the beer store. So the closest thing I, I would say is, yeah, I have monetized and recycled <laughs> and cashed in my beer bottles and... <laughs> When and buy they, another case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They do the beer, they do the wine, they, they, they pretty much do everything. I, I guess that's a, an area that uh, uh, in the future, perhaps we'll have an expert here in Canada come in and, and share some of the programs in education, in uh, introducing it to corporates, making and working with people in corporates uh, for sustainability uh, in line with, I guess, unity and diversity and, and these type of programs that allow our businesses to be more economically friendly, more socially friendly, and more, uh, of course, environmentally friendly. So the, the next question we have uh, for Kevin is really about a topic that uh, you and I have been experimenting with and absolutely love is the idea of innovation. So let's hear yes. a little bit about what Starbucks is doing in the world of innovation. innovative new uh, beverages for our customers. And a few years ago, we called out this shift from hot beverages to cold. It's a mix shift. And uh, if you look at what, uh, what we've seen recently, we now see more than 50% of the beverages that we, uh, we sell at Starbucks are cold. And if you think about cold brew and nitro cold brew and those sets of, of, uh, of, of beverages, We've now introduced these uh, these iced shake and espresso beverages that we just introduced along with oat milk, and those are super popular. In fact, uh, you know our, our beverage mix is well above fifty percent cold, and uh, you know as you point out, we're going to continue to innovate around things like cold pressed espresso. So in addition to cold brew, nitro cold brew, we're now innovating when it comes to the espresso beverage line as well, and we're seeing many more iced espresso beverages than we've ever seen uh, in our past. Well, again, I, I think that's when people think of Starbucks back 20 years ago, it was purely hot beverages. Of course, we had the macchiato, we had the different types of latte, and now they've really moved to a point where 50% of their, their sales are different types of cold brews. And, and what, when you see that, what, uh, what comes to mind? Really, I, I think it was just, it's, it's just uh, an amazing idea of what they did. To me, I see they opened up um, a whole new audience because they were able to get, I mean, you look now and I think high school kids and older are drinking those cold beverages. Um, I think you also opened up more seasons where people will actually have a coffee beverage of some sort. Um, I, I know for myself, I, I've always been more prone in the summer, you drink cold. And then in the winter, you drink warm or, you know, the winter and the fall type of thing, right? Well, now look at the number of people they probably gained by being able to make that uh, coffee available all year round. So, you know, it's it's an amazing innovation, really. Um, and and the just thinking, what you know, what, what do you keep coming up? What do you think of to go into the future to keep that going? Um, uh, do you keep you know, bringing out more styles or, or what type of things would you think of? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see what the future will bring. Well, they're going to be very active in the data analytics. They're going to be, the other component is by adapting to the COVID experience is they know they need to meet their customers where their customers are. So the adaptations throughout the year have been about having curbside pickup, having delivery, 
having uh, the opportunity to be in the shops. So by having all of these adaptions, they've created these new streams of interactions with their mm -hmm. customer. And that's been an amazing part because their stock has actually done really well this past year. And if you would think that they would have been pummeled because they've, they've had to shut a lot of shops, yet right. they haven't been punished because they've been able to build up the channels of delivery and interaction with their customers in mm -hmm. different types of technology, data mining, and the collection of that information and utilization of the information. Yeah. And so that's, again, something that you've been experimenting a little bit with uh, MailChimp and different ways to, to get the data, analyze the data, perhaps adapt the strategy, the, the, the testing, A-B testing. And these are all ways that we can start to use that information that is now available that again 10 years ago the cookies weren't available and today we're now getting cookies in everything that we're touching and that's how we're being again in inundated with information that makes you feel like you're psychic it's just all those cookies working google working yeah. uh, facebook working to target us as the product yeah everything in the background that's picking up our trends yeah that's going to be huge so when you think of Starbucks, is it a, a buy, sell, or hold from a stock investing perspective from yourself? Or ask me a question about it, and we might have a little dialogue about the investment possibility for uh, Starbucks, given that that's been a topic that we've also been exploring over the next uh, last uh, few months. Any questions that you might have? Yeah, so for I mean, they've been around for you know a long time now. Um, what what would that be something you know would that be criteria um what other criteria besides the length of time they've been around uh would you consider to whether you would actually keep that kind of stock for a long period of time the financial analysis i think is important so one would go in and, and take a look at their 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 balance sheet their cash flow their expenses and attempt to create a story to see if it is a it's a compelling story to be part of Starbucks next 10 years. And it, if one does go and explore that, you'll notice that their expansion in China is just at the very early stages. And wow. so it becomes very compelling primarily because of their growth potential in China. Right. And the fact is that Asia tends to drink a lot more cold coffee than warm coffee. And okay. so Japan has traditionally been that way. And that's why Starbucks, one of the reasons Starbucks has done very well also in Japan and their expansion in China. So you would look at it as where's their growth? Where's their profitability? They've also done an incredible effort to be like they really treat their staff like partners. And they've been elevating the bar in human relations in the States. And so I, at least from what I've read and done a little bit of research, is that they are going to be moving forward with the minimum wage of $15 per hour. They are moving ahead with any of their barristers that want to go on to university. They have scholarship programs. They oh, have wow. opportunities to really invest in their staff. So as a investment, you're looking at, are they going to continue to grow? Uh, what are the forecasts? You can go and do a little research on what the analysts are saying. You can see the trend. You can take a look at the technical analysis a little bit. You can look at the charts to see how the charts are looking. And I actually did do this last week. And I, I did consider uh, putting a little bit of money at either Starbucks or Ford. And I d ended up putting my money at this time uh, at Ford. Okay. Uh, I also looked at Win, which is a gambling stock. When as is in the hotels? As in the casinos. Okay. And I also looked at the cruise lines. And so okay. at this time, I've been looking at some of the ones that have been beaten up a little bit. And Starbucks is not one that's been beaten up. In fact, their 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 chart has very strong. Their profitability has been very strong, and they've done very well in the last year. Ford is looking to do quite well. I did the comparison between Ford and Tesla because okay. Tesla has just gone ballistic, right? Eight, right. 800% in the last year. But Ford has done well. It's actually doubled in the last year. 
Yet okay. from a relative perspective, Ford just needs to have a little improvement to get a bigger return. Tesla right. has to continue to wow people. Yet yesterday, the top analyst in America, Kathy Woods from ARK Investments, just put a target price for Tesla for 2025 at over $3,000. Currently, it's at about six seventy. So she's talking to another four bagger, five bagger for that Tesla. And I'm just thinking if Ford can even do do like 20% of that, it will be a very good investment in Ford. So yeah. that's just a little bit of the mindset behind it is I am comparing things right now and looking right. at what I would like to own for the next three to five to perhaps 10 years. I'm not necessarily looking for quick trades. I'm looking at, right. as we've talked about, companies that I, I like, I, I would like to own for a while. And that's what I'll keep coming back around to. By owning Starbucks, what I do like about that is that you really will have a company that is going to be leading edge in their social responsibility. Right. Similarly with your Disney, the same thing is very relevant. Is Disney's storytelling on what they're doing for the, for the environment, what they're doing yes. for people, what they're doing for education is very compelling. So owning a share or 10 of Disney is phenomenal for the information that you start to tap into. Yes. And so that's what I, I guess I'm really going to continue to share, especially in the area of financial literacy. I'm, I'm, I want to explore more with financial literacy in Canada. I, I've had the privilege of teaching it in Singapore and in Malaysia and in New Zealand. And it would be really wonderful to be able to work with some people in Canada who might have some interest to, again, educate in a way that's fun, engaging, uplifting, yes. experimental. Uh, it's not about having to be perfect because as you know, uh, practice makes progress. Progress. And I'm going to probably say that in most of my talks, practice makes progress because so yeah, many yeah. people in our school system, it really has been trained. Practice makes perfect. And, and so people have a syndrome, uh, an imposter syndrome of having to feel they need to be perfect. Right. And in, in, in business, it's certainly not about perfection. It's about pivoting quite often. And yes. so is there any other, is that, did that sort of answer your question about the, the Starbucks uh, analysis? Is there a follow-up to that? Yeah, no, I, well, I guess one other thing, because I, I know I've been focusing on stocks that have dividends. Um, you know, uh, what type of dividends, do, like Ford and Starbucks, what kind of things do they offer? Um, and if they don't, what what's the way that you deal with those stocks? Okay, that's a great question because in in a portfolio, I, I, if you have six or seven stocks, given our age, we want to have probably some dividend income. So having three, two or three or four of those stocks giving dividends, if it's got a lower dividend or no dividend, what you're hoping for is growth or capital gains. In Starbucks case, I believe the the yield is a little less than 1% right now. So you're not necessarily going to buy it for the, strictly the dividend. You're going to purchase it for the dividend and the capital appreciation, the growth. And it right. still has a pretty nice growth rate. And that's the thing that when I analyzed it, uh, Ford and GM both had over the years reduced or even eliminated their dividends because they had financial troubles. Okay. Uh, both of them their key focus has been to pay down some debt. And it, when that happens, that's why the market has rewarded General Motors, General Electric, Ford. I sort of put them in the similar type of boat. I would welcome anyone who wants to sort of take a shot at me. We could have a conversation about it. Uh, I actually own two of the three right now, and I'm, I'm happy with my GE position and my Ford position. And I haven't had to jump into GM yet, uh, even though it is run by Mary Barrow, who's done a a really good job over the last two years and the stock has done quite well. So GM has uh, run up a lot. Uh, it is definitely uh, attractive right now, especially if you compare it to Tesla or any of the other EVs. If you compare it to a, a Neo from China or a uh, Lucid Air that just uh, uh, became public, it's uh, uh, the the valuations of the American car companies are, are actually quite reasonable. They're, they're paid they're I think they're less than 12 in a price earnings ratio, which is quite conservative. And it's probably something they're going to 
uh, beat. And when they beat, then the street will hopefully see value and more people will invest in it. Oh, cool. So for you, Disney would also be in that case where it's not a high dividend pair, yet it's going to be fascinating. It's Today's news is that they're going to be doing a number of their new movie launches, both through streaming and at the theaters. And I believe two of them day, are coming yeah. up. Two of them are coming up in the next week or two. And so it's not great news for the theaters, yet it's great news for the Disney fans that can either stay at home and make your own popcorn or get out and go to the theater. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a, our opening, our grand human reconnection is going to be uh, quite fascinating in the, in the weeks and months ahead. So what excites you most about today? Learnings from uh, Starbucks, from the chairman, uh, Kevin Johnson, uh, in the areas of the grand human connect reconnection or innovation or the environment? The, you know, I'm always curious about innovation. So that was prime for me. Um, then that party talked about uh, respecting the past, and then having the courage to go into the future, um, that one that one had resonated really well. Um, but yeah, that that would be prime, and then the environment is second. But uh, I'm always curious on how people think as far as how they get their ideas. You know, where are they looking? How what what spot in the future are they looking at? You know, ten years, twenty years, five years, that sort of thing. So uh, that definitely was something that was uh, very interesting. No, very good. Well, I appreciate your time today. We're going to bring this uh, session of Canada Startup, uh, our sponsors, uh, Lead Pedal Radio. We're inviting people to check us out on Continual Shift on YouTube and on Instagram. And it's been a great opportunity to bring in a new flavor, a, a Starbucks flavor, to stir up the in discussion. And also hopefully to have some good takeaways for people today. I definitely have written a few comments here and we welcome people to subscribe, add comments and even send in a request that's of an upcoming show that you would like to see. And I guess that's how I'll bring it to a close today. In the next month or two months, Bill, what topics would you like to explore and, and perhaps would really pique your interest to be part of? Um, definitely the financial literacy part. There's some terms and, and uh, some um, strategies that I, I'd be curious about. Um, uh, every now and then you'll say something about uh, a partial position and stuff like that. Um, so learning that and then just understanding, you know, what capabilities people have, um, you know, like if I want a piece of Bitcoin, for example, since we've been talking about crypto so often, I don't have $70,000 or $50,000 to buy one full share. So what's the process that I need to consider to get my little sliver of a Bitcoin, those kind of things. Um, and understanding the terms and, and then the strategy and that sort of thing. One of the things that we may do, Bill, is invite a, a third, a guest, and and maybe that person could be a boomer and we could help them design their portfolio. And yep. Or we could get a 20-year-old who's fairly new to it. I've actually been chatting with a number of 20-year-olds lately. They've been asking a little bit about that. We could bring them on. We could handle and engage any types of questions. If any of our listeners today, they, they would like to appear on an upcoming show about financial literacy, picking a portfolio, investing in Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, uh, NFTs, uh, stocks, dividends, uh, e uh, EFTs, uh, exchange traded funds. We can uh, engage that and, and have a show on that. And that's something that our friends at Lead Pedal Radio have given us some good feedback on. Uh, Canada Startup, we're welcoming and inviting uh, any entrepreneurs, small business owners, would like to uh, engage with us in financial literacy, financial fitness, and possibly financial freedom. That would be nice. All right. Well, Bill, thank you so much for your time today. You have an absolutely great week ahead. And that's it for today. Please check us out on Continual Shift on YouTube, Instagram, leave a comment, and have a great, magnificent week ahead. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. See you next week.